Welcome to the Self Girl Nerds Podcast. I'm your host, Marie, a courage coach, creative soul, and adventure seeker. Since through hiking the Pacific Crest Trail in 2019, I'm on a mission to help you embrace your most confident self so you can achieve your dreams too. If you're eager for deep conversations, big questions, and meaningful connections, join me on the quest to discovering how we can create a more magical and memorable life. Hello, nerds! How are you? I'm so, so good. I just came back from a, a week in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I was going to my first ever work convention. So it was called Life Coaching Live and it was three days packed with workshops, introspection, conversation, coaching, all the stuff I am really passionate about. Like people with big visions, big dreams who really want the, to get the most out of their lives, um, all meeting in one place. So there was such magical energy there. Um, and it was just my first time being immersed so much in what I'm passionate about. And I loved it. I met some amazing people. I also met my friend Allison for the first time in real life. So she dreams of Alpine. I've told you about her before. She's come on the podcast twice. We've been internet friends for a few years now, but we had never made, met face to face before. And we ended up just getting on so well, like as if we'd known each other for the longest time. We would just lie in our hotel beds at night and talk like teenagers, like until it was like we were getting really tired and like our eyes were half closed. And we were like, we should stop talking now. We should get to sleep. <laughs> stop talking to me. We need to sleep. We need to get up early tomorrow morning. <laughs> so that was really great. I love, like, I'm so grateful to the internet that I got to, I got to know her via Instagram. And then she's like a, a really dear friend of mine. This is amazing. We also went hiking uh, in the desert. I got to see some gigantic cacti. Uh, <laughs> we had some good food, some good wine. And yeah, I was just, my heart was full uh, as I left and I really can't wait to do this again. I have another trip, another work trip planned in March. Alison's going to be there as well and I'm really excited that I have created a life in which I get to do this, in which I don't need to ask permission to go away for a week or two. I get to decide. I remember when I was working in a design agency and I wanted to go to South Africa. It was, there was a lot of resistance when I asked to go for three weeks, like three weeks seemed like a, a big deal. And now I just get to craft my own schedule and decide what's going to light me up. And I'm really grateful for that. I am privileged, but also I have worked to get here in a very intentional way. Um, I have designed my life. I had this goal in mind and I work my way here and now I get to enjoy it. So this is great. Okay, so this weekend we talked a lot about money and also I did a workshop with my clients about their relationship with money because it's so important. If you have money, old money stories in your mind, they might get in the way of your goals without you even noticing so that's what I want to do today. We're going to look at five money mindsets that might slow you down and look at perspective shifts, okay? And you'll you'll notice I've been, the last two episodes have been five habits, five ways, and I'm on the roll. I just like numbers these, these days. And this podcast is also five money mindset shifts and the next podcast will... <laughs> Our lists as well. I don't know. My mind loves a list these days. Gives me some comfort, gives me some structure, and I hope you're enjoying this too. So today, five money mindset shifts. Let's jump in. Okay, the first one is a really big one. We have been taught growing up that we must exchange our time for money, but that is a lie. That's not what's going on. The truth is we get money from the value that we create. 
the more value you create, the more money you are going to make. Let me give you some examples so you really understand what I'm talking about. So your boss does not pay you to sit at your desk doing nothing for 40 hours a week. If that's what you did, if you just sat at your desk and did nothing, they would eventually just fire you, right? Because you're not bringing in value. And let's make one thing clear before we move forward. When I talk about value, I'm not talking about your personal worth as a human being. Because all of our personal worth is like a million billion dollars, okay? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the value that you create with your brain, with your expertise, with it's what you produce. So if someone in the same company as you, one of your colleagues, makes more money, it is likely because they offer more value to the company or because they've learned how to better express the value that they create. So they might have gone in and asked for a raise and they have been able to express what is it that they bring in a clear enough way that the other person understood the value that they bring and has decided to to compensate them accordingly. Now, this is really important. Value is not objective, okay? Value is determined by the person paying. So teachers are a good example. In, in my opinion, the value that teachers bring is like, they should make half a million every year, something like that. They should make so much money every year. That's not the case in many places. Now, if we look at Finland, I think Finland is the country that pays their teacher the most. So they value teaching more highly than we in Canada do, for example. And that's not necessarily the population. Like, I have my view. I have my idea of how valuable teaching is, but who who takes care of that? It's the government that has a budget and they decide how much money goes to schools, to public schools. Then they, the Canadian government, values teaching in a certain way that's different from Finland. Another example would be a Chanel bag, Coco Chanel purse. If you don't care about purses, if you don't care about fashion, if you don't care about luxurious brands, if I ask you how much would you be willing to pay for a Chanel bag, how is how valuable is it for you? You might tell me, well, I don't really care. Um, I'd be willing to pay maybe maximum a hundred bucks. And someone else for the same exact bag might be willing to pay $10,000, right? So the value is determined by the person paying. I remember when I was a graphic designer and illustrator, I would charge like average of $50 an hour. And then one day I put illustrations on Instagram and this person asked me if they could buy the illustration and if they could hire me to create more of them for them. Um, So I said, yes. And then they asked me, how how much do you charge per hour? And remember, at that time, I was charging like $50 an hour for my work. But I knew that this person lived in Manhattan. And I knew that they made a lot of money. So I thought, okay, I think my work in their eyes would be more valuable than $50 an hour. So what I told them is I said, I charge $100 an hour. And they went, oh, okay, no problem. To them, that was a no-brainer. Whereas someone else might have told me, oh my God, $100 an hour? No, that's too much for me. I can't afford that. So see how it's not personal. It's never about you. It's about how the other person values what you can bring to them. Who is this person? What do they value? And you can play with that. If you have an employer, your employer is your client. They determine the, the, the value of your work. The same work, let's say you do marketing. If you do marketing for a nonprofit, it's going to be valued differently as if you do marketing for a big corporation like Nike. The work might be the same, but the client is different. So if you want to make more money, don't just think, okay, I just need to work more hours if I want to make more money. That might be true in some industries, but you also have to think about where, where is it that my work 
is going to be seen as very valuable. And how can I learn to better express the value of my work? Because yes, the value is determined by the person paying, but you can influence their perception. If they don't know how amazing what you're selling is, let's say you're selling like a special bread that has a bunch of nutrients in it, they might at first see the bread and just think it's a regular bread and not want to pay more than three or four bucks for it. But if you can say, oh, look, this bread is valuable because it has all of this, these nutrients and X, Y, and Z. I'm not, uh, I don't know anything about bread, but you get what I'm saying. If you can explain what they can get from what you're offering, whether it's you're selling something, you're always selling, right? You are selling yourself, your skills, your expertise to your employer. And so the better you sell yourself, your bread, your your services as a business, whatever it is, the more likely the person you're selling to is to value what it is you are offering, to see the ways in which it will help them, to see the ways in which it will improve their lives. If you tell your employer, look, here's what I can do for you. I can do this kind of work, this kind of task faster than most people. And here's why this is valuable for you. Like think about the impact that it can have. Then they will be more likely to go, huh, oh, Yes, okay, I might be willing to pay more money for that. Knowing the value that you bring is also very empowering and makes you less likely to be exploited. Because if someone doesn't see your value, and again, I'm not talking about your personal value. If someone doesn't see the value of your work, you can make it clear to them. And if they still don't see it, you get to decide, do I want to stay here or do I want to go somewhere where they do see my value. I guess that also applies to your personal worth as a person. It's the same thing. If you're surrounded with people that don't see how worthy you are as a human being, you, you want to get out of the, that room. You want to get out of that room. You want to make sure you're surrounded by people who see how amazing you are. And it's the same thing with the value of your work. You want to make sure that you go to the places where your work is valued. And before we move on, I want to add a caveat. Um, Sometimes your work is valued, but the person paying does not necessarily have the amount of money. So maybe let's let's stay with the teacher example. Maybe your teacher and your managers, uh, your school principal very much values your work but maybe they don't have the money to pay you, they might uh, show that they value your work in different ways. It's not always about money. The person that was not able to pay me $100 an hour didn't necessarily value my work less. Maybe they just didn't have the funds, um, but they might show that they acknowledge my value by saying, oh, well, I give you creative freedom, or I give you in a different situation, I can't give you a raise, but I can give you one day off a week, or I can give you really good conditions. So it doesn't show up in terms of dollar signs. It might show up in different ways, okay? But that's the that's the main number one money mindset shifts. You don't get money in exchange for your time. You get money in exchange for the value that you create. So think about that. See how you can play around with this in your life. Uh, money mindset number two, Wanting to make money is selfish. I hear this a lot, especially from people who are socialized as women. We don't want to make more than our friend. It's unfair if we have more money than someone else. Everyone deserves to have equal amounts and I should not stand out. Standing out is bad. Standing out is selfish. I don't deserve to have more than someone else. Okay, that might be a story that you have internalized. Now, you can keep that story if you want. We don't know. I mean, we don't know what's true and what's not. Everything is up for debate. Everything is up for personal interpretation. You can keep believing this if you want. I just want you to get curious about the impact it might have in your life 
to hold on to a story like this and I want to offer different perspectives, okay? So I'm not telling you, I don't have like the holy truth. I just want to bring some wiggle room and I want to ask you, is is this how it is really? Or is this something that you've been told by society or by your parents or by your friends that you have decided to believe? And maybe it's optional. I personally don't think that making more money, wanting to make more money is selfish. Because what I want to do with that money is take care of myself, be able to take time off, be able to treat myself to a nice place to live, comfortable, quality clothes. I want to be able to, for example, encourage local designers versus cheap clothing from China. Um, I want to be able to hire people to work with me, pay them well, offer them good benefits. That takes money. Is this selfish? I don't think so, because if I treat myself well, if I use the money that I make to take care of myself, then I get to feel better. And when I feel better, when I'm happier, that is contagious. When I take care of myself versus if I'm burnt out, what's the energy that I bring in the room? If you don't have the resources to take care of yourself and you're always tired, always burnt out, that has an impact on the people around you. Let's say you're a parent and you have the resources to take time for yourself. Maybe someone else takes care of of your kids and you can relax. Then you come back, you can be a more patient parent. And that, think about it, has an exponential impact. There would be a lot less childhood trauma if people had the resources to take care of themselves. Because when you take care of yourself, you're more able to give love to others. People feel more taken care of. And in turn, they can take better care of others. And, you know, we could argue that it's the system's job, the government's job to make sure that everyone has their basic needs met and everyone has, you know, these basic, like, this basic access to well-being. But that is not the case right now and we cannot control the system. So we have to focus on what we can control. And right now, in the moment, what we can control, many of us, is how much money we make. So wanting to make more money is not selfish. Wanting to make more money can just mean that you have decided you want to take better care of yourself because you see the impact that it can have around you. I have heard many people um, have thoughts like, well, it's unfair if I make more than this other person. And yeah, yeah, it's unfair. But I don't think the world has ever been fair. And does it serve anyone if you try to keep yourself small and you don't aspire to more. If you just try to be equal to your peers, then nothing, no, no one gets to feel better. And think about it. If you can feel better, then you can bring others with you versus just staying at a miserable, the same level of, of miserable and complaining together about how it's not fair, how we don't have what we need. What if you decide... No, I'm going to go get it. I'm going to go figure out how to make more money. Then from there, I'll have more resources to help. Think about it. Like now that my business makes more money than it used to, I can afford to offer a scholarship. I used to feel bad to feel guilty about the prices of my programs um, because I thought not, it's not accessible to everyone and I don't want to exclude anyone. It's not fair. And I had to shift this perspective because it was keeping me stuck. I had to start seeing, okay, look, there's this free podcast. Make this free podcast that you create really good so that it that that's the way that you help for free that's accessible to everyone. And then you get to help the people who can afford your coaching on a higher level. And then they in turn can have an impact because if they feel better that's going to have an exponential impact in their life. And with the money that I make from this, I can hire people. I can take care of myself and 
so that I can help even more people versus just trying to help everyone for free or for very little money and keeping yourself in a state of like almost survival. Taking care of yourself, deciding that you don't want to just survive, you want to thrive, is not selfish in my opinion. It is essential. But that is only my opinion and you get to decide what you want to believe. If you believe that wanting to make more money is selfish, go ahead, be my guest. Just ask yourself, what's the impact that this has in your life? Do I want to keep believing this? And just try on different beliefs. Try on like as if you're trying on a piece of clothing in a store. What would it be like if you believed differently? Are you willing to consider that you might be wrong? Or not that there's a right or wrong way to think about this, but are you willing to consider that there is a way to think about this that would improve the quality of your life? Okay, so that was number two. Number three, spending money is careless or irresponsible. You should save it all. You should never buy a latte. You should always make coffee at home, not enjoy this delicious latte because you want to make sure that you have money for your retirement. Don't enjoy your life now. Enjoy it later. I'm making fun of this a little bit. And again, it's there's no right or wrong here. It's just questioning the beliefs that we that have been encoded into our brains when we were younger. So maybe you have learned from your parents, depending on the family situation that you were in, oh no, you shouldn't spend money, this is irresponsible, because that's how they viewed the world. But what about you? How do you want to live your life? Is it true that spending five bucks for a latte is careless? Or actually, it doesn't matter if it's true or not. How does it make you feel? Like, we could argue on both sides. We could argue that it's careless and we could argue that it's not. We don't know the truth. No one does. You just get to decide. Well, when I think that it's careless to buy a latte or buy a glass of wine, how does that feel? Well, maybe you'll say, well, then it makes me feel guilty because I do it and then I feel ashamed and I beat myself up. Versus if you think, oh, spending can be caring, then you might treat yourself now and then and just feel really good and that might improve your day. Like little things, spending money on little things that bring you joy or big things that bring you joy might improve your day. Is it really serving you to think that spending is irresponsible? Maybe it is. Maybe for you it serves you because it keeps you from falling into old patterns. I don't know. How does it make you feel about yourself? If it makes you feel like in control, then great. But if it makes you feel like self-loathing, well, I would question that belief. If it makes you feel like you're being told off by a parent, I would also question that belief. Last winter, I spent seven hundred dollars on a winter coat where I could have got a really good one for like 100 200 but I didn't care I wanted this yellow puffy it was so comfortable so lush and is it careless maybe it is I don't really care because it made me feel amazing making money and spending money is neutral you get to decide what you make it mean in this example I make it mean that You know, I just wanted the coat. I could afford it. Makes me feel good. That's it. You don't have to go into your old stories to listen to the voice in your mind that might be like maybe it was your dad that thought this way. Your dad thought this way and you still hear their voice in your mind like, what? You spent $700 on this? This is irresponsible. Like you get to choose. Do you want to believe that or not? And you might be someone who's like, no, Marie, I just, I don't want to spend any money that I don't need to spend because I want to retire really early and that's okay. Great. If you love your reason, that's what's important. If you know why you're doing it and you love your reason, that it comes from you, that it's intentional, it's a conscious decision, not a decision that you're making based on like past experiences and beliefs that you have been sold as the truth. Okay, so that was number three. Now, number four, money will make you bad. Like making a lot of money is going to make you into a bad person. I don't want to become like the rich people. That also 
I think is so funny because money is completely neutral. It doesn't do anything. It just sits there. Ten different people with the same amount of money are going to do different things, are going to be different people. They are going to use this neutral tool in a different way. Someone might make $10,000 and they might decide to donate it. Someone else might decide to make a movie out of it. Someone else might decide to buy drugs with it. Someone else might decide to pay a serial killer to go kill their aunt. <laughs> it's super neutral. And you might be like, well, Marie, money is power. And when people become powerful, they become... No, that also, to me, doesn't make sense. Power is also neutral. Some people have power, they do awful things with it. Some people have power, they do beautiful things with it. It's not about the tool. It's about the person using the tool. So with that in mind, money cannot make you bad. Just like it makes me think of a last weekend at the event, there was someone that wanted to get coached. They said, wine is controlling my life. And the coach, Brooke Castillo, she said, um, have you seen a bottle of wine? It doesn't do anything. It just sits there. Wine cannot control your life. We have to be careful the words that we use. Money cannot make you bad and wine cannot control your life. You have power. When you think this way, you're putting all of your power onto something external, like wine, like money. No, you get to decide who you become. You get to decide what you do. You have more power than you think. This also makes me think of, um, there's a famous comedian in Quebec. He became famous during the pandemic. And, so you know, sometimes we hear stories of like fame makes people turn into self-centered divas. And he said to his family, like, oh, if I ever turn into like an asshole, you let me know, okay? And his sister told him at one point, you know, what you just said or what you just did, that was kind of a dick move. <laughs> and he went, oh my God, you know, you're right. Thanks for letting me know. And he took his power back. It's not fame that's doing it to him as if he has no control. It's just happening. He can step back into power. Like you can step back into your power if you see that having money makes you, makes you think in certain ways that you don't like. You have control over that. Okay? And are you willing to trust yourself enough? Are you willing to trust yourself that if you made the amount of money that you want to make, that you'd just be the same person. You just would have more resources. If you're someone who loves to give who loves to give gifts, well, you might give different kinds of gifts, but you remain the same at your core. If you're someone who loves traveling, you might just change the kind of trips that you do. If you're someone who loves going out to eat, you might just change the kinds of restaurants that you go to, but you remain the same person. If you're someone who loves to encourage locally, to encourage your local businesses, you might just be able to encourage your local businesses on a higher level. So you get to decide. You're in charge. Okay, so that was number four. Now, lastly, we have number five. I'm not a money person. Slash, I just want enough money. Just, just, you know, just enough for my basic needs. I don't need more. Money is fake anyway. I hear that a lot. Oh, no, 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 I'm not a money person. And I think we have to ask yourself, like, where does that come from? What is it that you're truly saying? I'm not a money person. Like, because you have all these stories that money is bad, that money is selfish, that money is X, Y, and Z, and you don't want to be seen that way. You don't want to be perceived that way. Is that what you're saying when you're saying I'm not a money person? Just ask yourself. And... What's the impact of that in your life? One of my clients, she was telling me, money's fake anyway. It's just something that we've invented in our society. It doesn't really exist. And I could agree with her. We could, we could have a whole conversation about how she's right. But then what we, want, what we did, because that's what we do in coaching, is, okay, thinking that, believing that, holding on to that thought that money is fake, how does that show up in your life? And what we discovered is that she wanted to own a property that she could give to her children when she passed. And her believing that money was fake meant that she was not showing up in her business. She was not selling her services with as much confidence, with, which is, with as much self-assuredness, 
because of that money story. And the result of that was she was not making as much money as she could make. And without money, it's pretty challenging to own property. So it's one thing to be able to say, I want to own property, like this is my goal. You also have to look at the stories that might be getting in your way. What's the kind of life that you want to lead? And are you taking actions accordingly? Or are you letting these beliefs slow you down? I get a lot of resistance sometimes when I ask people how much money they want to make. And they tell me, oh, you know, just enough. I don't need much, just a little. And I want you to get curious because there's no right or wrong way to be. But when there is, when you feel triggered, when there's a lot of resistance that comes up, you want to ask, you want to get curious. Like, oh, what's so bad about wanting more? Because you don't need much. I don't need much money. I know. I mean, I was happy with a backpack in the woods, but I want more. Because there's all these things I want to be able to experience. There's, I want to create jobs. I want to donate money. I, I, money, that was weird. I want to be able to help young people with their dreams. Like I would love to send kids to summer camp. I would love to send books to schools. I would love to play with that flow. When you have more money, you have more power and you get to decide, okay, this is going to go there, this is going to go there and create, participate in the creation of the kind of world that you want to create. And that's not the only way, right, to make an impact. Having money and spending it in ways that are aligned with your values is not the only way to make an impact by any means, but I just want you to try going there and, and playing around and leaving the resistance out of it. When you're feeling resistance, you're limiting yourself. You're limiting your imagination. So if you if you didn't have any resistance when it came to money and you just had playfulness and creativity, what would come up? What would you allow yourself to think about if you put those stories down for a moment? If you were willing to say, okay, maybe, you know, maybe what I've been taught is not the truth, the only truth. What if I drop that for a moment and try to try on a different set of beliefs as if you were trying on something in a dressing room then what you might be surprised with what you come up with when I realized you know what if I made x amount of money I could hire people and I could offer them a job where they have four days of work per week and really good salaries and really good benefits and that made me so excited also, when I thought about, you know what, I could send kids to summer camp that cannot go. They don't have the money to go. I could do that. How fucking exciting is that? Let yourself go there. You don't have to do it, but just let yourself go there and explore. Okay? So these were my five money mindset shifts. I'm going to repeat them before we leave. Number one, you don't get money in exchange for your time. You get money in exchange for the value that you create or how valuable you your work is in the eyes of the person that pays you. So think about that. You want to make sure if you want to make more money to go somewhere where your work is valued. And also to be able to express the value of your work to the right people. I could spend hours expressing to you the value of a Lamborghini. If you don't care about fancy cars, you're not going to get it. So you have to be offering the right value to the right people. Okay? Number two, wanting to make more money is not selfish. It's neutral. And you get to decide what you make out of it. I think wanting to make more money can have amazing impact around you. You can use it to take care of yourself, be the best version of yourself, and that energy is just super contagious. And I mean, we could argue that not taking care of yourself when you have the resources to do so is much more selfish, has much more of a neg negative impact on the people around you than the opposite. Number three, spending is not careless or irresponsible. Again, spending money is neutral. You get to decide what you make it mean. Spending money can be caring. Spending money can be actually very responsible. It's responsible to take care of yourself. I mean, I've spent a lot of money 
um, to become a better coach, to become a bit better businesswoman. And the money that I make with that, I put it back into the world in a very responsible way by creating jobs, for example, creating financial security for my family. And I mean, let's be honest, I don't always spend my money on smart things. Sometimes I buy some silly things and I'm like, why? Why did I do that again? And that happens to everyone and it's not a big deal. It doesn't have to mean anything awful about your character as a human being. Number four, money cannot make you bad. Money cannot do anything. It's neutral. You get to decide how you use the tool. It's kind of like a hammer. You can use a hammer to build a house or you can use a hammer to hit someone. Money is the same. It's neutral. And lastly, number five, think twice if you think you're not a money person. If you think, oh, I just want enough to cover my basic needs or money is fake. Think twice about the impact that that way of thinking has in your life. Is this getting you the life that you want? Where does it come from? Does it come from a fear of judgment? What's going on there? And is thinking this way, is it going to lead you to take the actions you need to take in order to create the life you want to lead, okay? I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'm here to encourage you to question how you think and whether or not that makes you feel how you want to feel and take the kind of actions that are going to create the results you want in your life. So that is it for today. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, please reach out to me on Instagram at selfgrowthnerds and share your insights. I love it when I hear from you. All right. Bye, everyone. Have a beautiful week. You just listened to the self Growth Nerds podcast. Make sure to subscribe and to find me on Instagram at self Growth Nerds. If you want individual help developing the confidence to create a more meaningful and exciting life, visit selfgrowthnerds.com today to learn how. Finally, I want to thank my friend Etienne Galano for editing this. And I want to thank you, kind-hearted souls, for growing into your truest, most courageous selves every day and making this world a better, more beautiful place. My name is Marie, and I will talk to you next week.